So what is par value and how does it relate to common stock? So common stock or capital stock, that is the basic ownership interest in a corporation. It does bear the ultimate risk of loss, but also the ultimate benefits of success. There are no guarantees of dividends when you invest in stock, and there's no guarantee of assets upon dissolution. The common shareholders generally do control management. So instead of starting your own business, a sole proprietorship, or going into business with partners and creating a partnerships and having just a capital account and a drawing account, with a corporation, your owner contributions, you're purchasing ownership of the corporation. And it must be handled differently. So that's why we see common stock accounts. We'll see preferred stock accounts. We'll see different paid in capital accounts. It's because it's so large. Corporations have to disclose everything, which is why the accounting is treated much differently. Instead of lumping all your earnings in equity in one capital account, you need to track it. It's important to track it differently. What are your rights? Well, if you own common stock, you have voting rights, and you have the right to share in the earnings of the corporation. And if the corporation was to dissolve and liquidate after the creditors' our claims are satisfied and those of preferred shareholders, then you have the right to anything that's left over. Common stock, this is ownership. You Instead of starting your own business, you're investing in another business, a publicly traded corporation. So what is the concept of par value? Well, it comes from early corporate law at which the par value originally indicated the real value of a share of stock. Nominal values of common is more common now, which now avoids complex statutory rules pertaining to those old corporate law as they related to par value shares. Nominal par value became common after the Great Depression, and why? Well, it was because the par value was so high in the 1920s, and then after the Great Depression, after the stock market crash, suddenly the fair market value of that stock was much less than its par value, and that created a problem, legal problems. There were actually some who tried to sue corporations because of that, so the the concept of par value is, is an old, outdated, archaic law, which is just carried forward to today using very small par values just out of tradition. The accounting treatment is from outdated laws still in existence today, but you must distinguish between the stated capital and additional paid in capital. So what does this mean? So let's say I have a par value of a penny and I sell a share of stock for a dollar. That means I record my capital stock, my common stock, at its par value at a penny and then I have another account called paid in capital excess of par where I record the difference, that 99 cents per share. It is a silly rules, but it is more of accounting tradition from about 100 years ago. There really is no theoretical reason to do so. It just follows accounting tradition only, and no one has changed it yet. Perhaps FASB will change the rules someday. So you may hear par value. You may hear stated value. You may hear no par value. It all depends on how the corporate charter was set up. This is determined, the par value stated or no par, is determined when the corporate charter is obtained. So what are owner's contribution? The category is paid in capital or contributed capital. What is paid in capital? Common stock is recorded at its par value. And then additional paid in capital, excess of par, is an account name within the category of paid in capital. Now it may seem a little confusing at first, but think back to earlier accounting chapters you may have studied. In a fundamental accounting class, if you had the category of revenue, you can have an account called sales revenue or an account called interest revenue, but it's in the broad category of revenue. 
Same thing here. We have paid in capital, the broad category, and then you have an account, common stock, and an account, additional paid in capital, comma, excess of par. Or additional paid in capital, comma, excess of stated value. So additional paid in capital is, is contributed capital in excess of par or stated value. The sale of treasury stock at a gain, which will be talked about in a different video. Treasury stock, when you buy it back, has very specific and strict accounting rules as it relates to later selling that at a gain or loss. And it all surrounds equity. You ca could have an additional paid in capital account that you've set up just to track gains and losses, or other things with the conversion of bonds. You could have an additional paid-in capital account for declaration of small stock dividends. So it's up to the corporation what they want to track. And other addition, additions to APIC. APIC stands for additional paid-in capital. It is studied in more advanced accounting courses. This is looked at in depth in intermediate accounting. So a little terminology that must be known, must be understood. Authorized, that's how many I'm allowed to sell. So I want to incorporate. I file my papers with the state, and this, in that corporate charter, it says how many total shares I am authorized to, to sell based on the corporate law. And then another term is issued. This can be internally owned or externally owned. And what does this mean? Well, externally owned means I've issued it to an external shareholder. It's someone owns it. Internally owns, we're talking about treasury stock. So I initially issued it, but I bought it back. And I don't buy unauthorized shares. Treasury stock is issued. It's out there on the stock market. And my corporation has bought it back through the stock market, so that is internally and externally owned. Now a third term is issued and outstanding. It's the outstanding. That means it's out there. Those are the external shareholders only. It excludes treasury stock. So outstanding is shares that someone outside of the corporation owns. Issued and outstanding. Issued is going to be the treasury stock. And stock, authorized, issued, and outstanding, this represents the ownership rights. So let's look at a quick example. Aim Hire Corporation sold 10,000 of its common shares. It had a $1 par value per share. Market price when it sold was $15 a share. So I record the cash coming in. The common shares, it is an equity account, normal balance is a credit, but it is only recorded at its par value. It must be recorded at par value. And then there will be another account, additional paid in capital or APIC excess of par. So this APIC excess of par, remember, is an account name within the broad category of paid in capital or contributed capital. Okay, another example, instead of par value, the corporate charter has a stated value. Cash comes in, only this time the stated value is $5 a share. And these are just numbers or examples. It can be anything that the corporation wants to set their par or stated value. And the additional paid in capital, excess of par. Now another example, let's say the corporation has no par value stock. You won't have an additional paid in capital excess of par account. Now why would something be par or stated or no par? Well let's say a corporation initially set no par and then later after the corporate charter was obtained they decided to set a stated value. That's where the stated value comes in. But really in the corporate charter it will either say a par value or no par value. 
So the concept of par value to review, it is an arbitrary amount that is assigned to shares of stock at the time the corporate charter was obtained. And there really is no logical reason for assigning a value other than to follow old accounting traditions. That's where it comes from.